Mike Seaver just did us dirty. Check out this clip. I love the Bible. Uh, I grew up as an atheist and I grew to love the Bible. The, bo the Bible that I, I thought was, the book I thought was a fraud, the book that I thought was just a, full of a bunch of rules designed to remove the fun out of, of my life. Uh, you're a Bible teacher and your ministry through Walk in the Word has potentially impacted me and my family more than any other Bible teaching ministry. And we're so grateful for you and for your family. But we're here to talk about Thank biblical you. illiteracy. Okay, so there's a few things that I want to tackle really quickly about this story. Basically, three things that I want to say. The first is that there is a Bible illiteracy problem uh, that is clear in this video. It's evident, but it's not necessarily attached to what uh, Kirk Cameron and James McDonald had to say. It's more the fact that they were talking on a TV show together um, because the Bible is actually really clear. It's not hard to understand what we're supposed to do with false teachers. And don't get me wrong, uh, James McDonald is a false teacher. You could do a Google search and find out all kinds of awful things that he said and did over an extended period of time to people in his congregation, to people on his staff, even to people in the broader evangelical world. All kinds of awful things, things that includes lawsuits, things that are still continuing to this day. Uh, he is unqualified. Uh, and for the last few years, he's been off the radar, but not because he hasn't been trying to get on the radar, but that no one would let him be on the radar. But now we're seeing like this pushback against cancel culture. And we see it with Mark Driscoll and Matt Chandler that Mark Driscoll gets to go and speak at the same conference as him. And I believe that we're seeing it now with Kirk Cameron, uh, basically saying, Hey, James McDonald, you're a great Bible teacher. And a lot of people I mean, they shouldn't be watching TBN anyways, because TBN is not a great place to get your theology or uh, your understanding of the Bible. Pretty awful, actually. Um, but uh, those people who are watching, they're probably getting introduced to him for the first time. Uh, you know, like I said, he's been off the radar, but now he's on the radar again. And people, you know, with this 24 hour news cycle of constantly being inundated with information, we hear something terrible and we quickly move on. And I'm afraid that Christians are the same, that we, we see pastors fall, we see people get hurt and we just kind of overlook it and uh, move on to the next story. And then, you know, it's only been a couple years. And here he is again on TV, on a big screen, talking about how he is a Bible teacher and he trains pastors. If you're trusting, you know, the training of your pastor uh, to James McDonald, you, you have really huge problems. Um, he is not a good Bible teacher and he doesn't live it out. And that's the most important thing with a preacher. Does he actually live out the things that he says from the pulpit? James McDonald clearly doesn't do that. Now, I do also want to say uh, that I do believe in redemption. You know, I've talked about this a few times, and I'm basically what I'm trying to do with these kinds of stories is try to hold people's feet to the fire a little bit and say, hey, this is messed up. Because if we don't, you know, these people just get bigger and bigger platforms and more and more people continue to get hurt, continue to get swindled by false teachers. Uh, and so we need to be able to say, hey, uh, Kirk Cameron, Mike Seaver, you really messed up with having this person on your show. Uh, but I do believe in redemption. But that's that that requires a lot more <laughs> repentance, actual <laughs> repentance, uh, remorse over an extended period of time. And you can look at what James McDonald has been doing since he left Harvest. Uh, all kinds of statements saying that he was right, that people are wrong, that he didn't know he was getting recorded, you know, all these kinds of things. Uh, he's blamed everyone else except for himself. Uh, and so he is not repentant. Uh, there, there has not been remorse. There hasn't been a season of discipleship. Same thing for Mark Driscoll going down and planting a church in Arizona. It, it's that. They don't want accountability, they, so they start their own things. And now people are allowing them onto these bigger stages, and we need to be very careful. Uh, now, there are pastors who fall, uh, depending on what they did. Uh, I do believe that over an extended period of time of being repentant, uh, of being discipled, uh, of being outside of ministry, 
they can get to a place where they can be qualified once again for ministry. I do believe that's true. As Christians, we must believe in second chances for a lot of these things where the Bible allows there to be second chances. And there are some qualifications of 1 Timothy 3 that if you uh, fail once, you're, you're done. Uh, that's my belief at least. Uh, but I do want to say that I do believe in repentance. The last thing I want to talk about is this Bible illiteracy problem, because this is an ongoing problem that a lot of people have seen. Uh, Jen Wilkins is one that like jumps to mind of constantly talking about this. Um, but I've seen it as well. Uh, but I will say it's different than what these two individuals, if you want to watch the clip, there's a link in the description. I'm not saying you should, but if you do, uh, you'll see these guys talking about facts that people don't know the facts of the Bible. They don't know what the Bible says. And while that is a problem, I would say their take is a little bit legalistic on that. Uh, but I do think that that is a problem. But the bigger problem to me is not that people don't know enough about the Bible, but they don't know how to read the Bible. They don't know how to study it. They don't know what they're supposed to get out of it. What? How, how do you make sense of the Bible? Uh, and I think that's a problem that comes from the pulpits. A lot of people haven't sat under a pastor who preaches expositionally and explains what the text means and is an example for them to go into their daily life and be able to do that with the Word of God. Uh, but also they haven't been trained. They haven't been given the tools in order to understand how to study the Bible. So what am I trying to do about that? Well, I'm starting a show on Friday mornings where I'm going to be talking about Bible rhythms. That's the name of the show, Bible rhythms. Uh, basically, how to study the Bible. For people who know theology, the fancy word is hermeneutics, how to study the Bible. So every Friday morning, I'm going to be doing a live Bible study uh, where we're going to deal with the text. We're going to explain what it means. But specifically, I'm going to be focusing on different aspects of Bible study and explaining how to actually understand what the Bible says. So be on the lookout for that on Friday morning. Uh, but about this whole story with Kirk Cameron and James McDonald, uh, there's, there's a lot to unwrap. Uh, I would be interested to know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, I have a lot on my channel about false teachers. And if you're curious about, you know, what should we do with these guys? How far does this go? You can click on this video right over here and I'll talk about how to handle false teachers and I'll see you in the next video.